So the deal is, we're at a really cool time. Things are changing all over the world at a pace that generations before us never had to deal with. We have to take on the responsibility to own the next 10 years to make decisions for the next 100. Never before, perhaps, was the world as dynamic and maybe before never as small. Today, we can sit in Stockholm and think about global problems and actually provide solutions. The dynamic in power is something that has been given to us and a task right at hand. In fact, I'm going to take you back to where I now reside in Boston. This is a typical day in Boston, and this is the energy that the Bostonians used. I picked a fun day, Valentine's Day last year. So you see in the middle of the night, there is rather low use of energy, and as people wake up, and in our, in our industries and in our service organizations, our schools, our offices, turn on power, we consume more. And you'll see there's pretty steady state until 5 p.m. when people start going home, starting the radio, going dancing, turning on the TV, starting cooking, cleaning, perhaps some laundry. And you see a peak of energy use. And then it looks like things turn down right around 9 p.m. Oh, this is Valentine's Day. I have no more questions. But I note with pleasure that the energy demand went down. So what about that peak? That peak of energy represents an opportunity. And to me, as an innovator and entrepreneur, it's a wonderful opportunity. It is a chance for us to shift the load of energy, energy demand. So what if we could find ideas, systems and processes, maybe new ways of thinking of how we use energy to shift that to later days? Before I enter into some of the discussions of what the solutions might be, I'll take you somewhere else. Oh yes, to Legoland. Like, I'm sure some of you have played with these things when you were little, Legos. And you know, we can create as kids totally new structures. And look at what architects do with these wonderful pieces, building blocks. Here's Venice. Oh, why not? Here's Washington. New, fantastic structures built upon small blocks. So I had an idea about seven years ago to basically provide a new building block to innovators globally to help in the sustainability equation to provide a new energy source. And I thought of just that, Legos. So what if I could take one, two, three Legos and put them together, just like that, click them together, and create a new laptop battery. A battery that would enable people to use it the way the laptop was intended. You buy it out of the box today, four hours of runtime. Two months later, you have a whopping two hours, and six months later, you have 20 minutes. What if you had four hours the entire time? Let's take that one step further. Three or four Lego energy blocks in a laptop, 16 in a scooter, 400 in a motorbike, 2,000 in a car. A real car that runs 200 kilometers. You can fit the whole family and the groceries in the back. You have crash worthiness. And um, it accelerates 0 to 100 in less than 10 seconds. Ladies and men, gentlemen, this is a car for real girls. An opportunity to shift the paradigm for transportation. And yes, it's clean, and it's always filled when you need to go to your daughter's ballet recital instead of going by the gas station on the way. I don't know how that happens, but it seems to happen every time. A car filled with clean energy. But now the real interesting thing happens. Not only is it a shift of convenience, but also a shift of energy. Most of us don't drive 200 kilometers a day. Most of us drive about 40 or 50, perhaps. So here comes the new paradigm. I have energy left in that car, and I can use it in an ecosystem larger than that. 
I think it's pretty important that we take big ideas to market and make it real things. So the Lego piece, in fact, became a cell. And this cell is little, I can put it in my pocket, so I can climb up a telephonic pole in India and combine it with solar panel and actually provide telecommunication. I can put this cell, mounds and mounds of them, in cars, and I can put them into real mass production. And since I think reduction to practice is so critical, I just want to show you a little film. Automated, clean, green production. I started this company on four promises. Longest lasting battery ever seen, highest energy density, fastest charging, embracing mobility and clean transport, clean energy. Making it safe. Proud to share, seven years of operations, zero incidents in the field. And the fourth item was green, true green. Mass producible and competing with the big incumbents in this electronics industry. An interesting time. So here's the paradigm. If I have the 200 kilometers in the tank, and I only used 40 or 50 that day, I basically have another 150, 160 kilometers of energy in my car. What if when I come home from work, I shift the energy to use part of the energy in my car. And by the way, I could have just a little keypad in my garage before I hook it up that says all the time, I must always preserve enough time to pick up Matthias from baseball and Anna Maria from ballet, but still, maybe one of us needs to run out and get milk and maybe go to the hospital. Let me say I only use 100 kilometers less. But let me deploy that into my cooking and cleaning and dancing and TV and all that stuff in my house. Let me use that to offload peak. And yet, when nobody uses energy, let me charge. In fact, let me also delay my laundry. Let me run it at night. Let me become aware of how that works. And by the fact that I could have a monitor that talks to me, that informs me of choices that I make, I can directly affect what happens. I could have basically revolutionized the grid, the way we see it. I could take care of that peak. I basically have now shrunk it. And you know what? It's very interesting. Even a large company like the United States of America, I could take 20 years and educate ourselves. And if we all did this, the US would never again have to build a power plant. Never again. Just by shifting existing infrastructure. And now it gets really interesting. Now we can basically think about large systems where transport is such a key ingredient in that success. There are so many entrepreneurs in the world, and innovators, to think about new systems. And it is with great joy and pleasure that I stand here and I hang out with all of you today and with others tomorrow that are focusing their entire lives in how to change the world for the better for future generations, many to come. Providing solutions where the establishment said it was not possible. In fact, I think there is an opportunity to do something really cool enormous threats in economies, in energy, in water, in human rights, ultimately, where we can decide collectively to be part of the solution. No pr protest of global warming, but actually be part of the action. This opportunity is here for us today, and the fact that we met this afternoon and we will be debating it all day and that we may reach out tomorrow for new partnerships and new initiatives to provide solutions is enormous. So I actually think we can fix it. <laughs>